Hey, how's it going you guys? This is Edwin of Income Tips and I'm super excited today because I have Ruben Chavez of Think Grow Prosper, one of the, you know, a massive Instagram account, an account that we here at Income Tips Kenneth and I have been following for a long time. You know, we've been uh, really tracking what this what Ruben has been up to. And uh, I think this could be very beneficial for those of you who are looking to grow an Instagram account and how to deliver to your audience because Ruben knows what's up. So Ruben, how are you, man? Hey, I'm awesome, man. Thank you for having me. Yeah, dude. Well, I appreciate you making the time. And uh, just to uh, give some folks a little bit of background on who you are, why don't you go ahead and uh, introduce yourself and let us know, you know, what is it that you're working on? Cool. Well, uh, my name is Ruben Chavez. Um, I am the founder and uh, and uh, currently still run a single prosper um, the Instagram page, and it's uh, my primary uh, hangout spot. Um, I am uh, currently working on a book, um, a physical book, and that will be released within a year. I'm also currently working on a few surprise goodies, little products, little physical products that I think will be really fun for, for people and that's going to be released shortly for the next couple weeks. Yeah, dude. Well, it sounds like uh, you've been really busy. So Think, Grow, and Prosper, for those of you guys who don't know, um, how many followers do you have currently? Can you like just give us a little taste? Yeah. Um, currently, we're at 2.6 million followers. 2.6 million followers. So 2.6 million followers. All right. So um, there's a lot that I want to dive into. Um, but first, I want to start off with, um, well, first, I'd like to get to know you. Like, where are you from? You know, what is it that, you know, what is, what would you say you do? What is your business? Um, primarily, Think Grow Prosper is currently a media company. Um, we're kind of in a transitional phase right now where we're transitioning uh, a little bit into um, being our own brand. But uh, and, and we're being kind of a brand with our own products. Um, and we, we've done both for, for years, but we're, uh, we're playing with the idea of, of, uh, of that right now. So yeah. media company meaning like, look, we work with brands, we work with, with large and medium sized brands who, um, who want to get their message out there mm -hmm. and who wants to, um, get exposure and, on a more technical level, who wants to want new new followers or new eyeballs on on their page, right. or who even wants to sell a product? So we kind of assist with that and bridge the gap between where they are and you know between um, like their following and our following. Right, right. Because you have such a, a massive audience. I mean, that's just a, a large amount of traffic that you could drive to your advertisers. I'd imagine. So, uh, well, I'd like to know. You know how it all started. That's that's kind of what I I want to like kind of dig into. Like, how did you even think about uh, this idea of think grow prosper? Like, uh, did you see other Instagrammers and was like, hey man, I want to have an Instagram account and and make money from it? Like, you know, were you trying to make money and decided to do this? Like, tell me a little bit about that story. Um, you know. That's a good question. My, my path wasn't really uh, money motivated at all, and it wasn't because I don't like money. I, I do, but uh, it was kind of an accident, honestly, um, which turned, turned into a more intentional uh, venture. But essentially, I, I was really going through a hard time in my life, and it was just um, I, I didn't. I was I, I was out of a job. I quit to pursue this herbal business that I had started in my kitchen, or, or like. Like actually packing herbs into uh, into into like pills, right? And whoa. and selling them. I, I tell I know I tell people that like, whoa, you're a drug dealer. And I was like, no, 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 like actual like legitimate. Um, yeah, like sure. Legal Supplements. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> like, yeah. Actually, mostly all legal now. So, yeah. Um, but anyway, yeah, it was like more like herbal supplements. Oh wow. So, okay. Um, but anyway, that kind of failed and. Um, and I was just at this place where, um, at the time, my my girlfriend, uh, well, my my girlfriend, not my fiance, but her mom was really sick um, with cancer, and this was a very stressful time overall. And I just, in those times, I generally go to books and I and I read, and um, that I've had so many mindset shifts and 
breakthroughs in, just in, even in one line of a book. Lines of books have changed my life. Hmm. Just one line. You know? So it's yeah. um, that's where I go, and that's what I was doing. And so um, in doing so, I just really wanted to remember a lot of the, the principles and some of the quotes that, that really resonated with me and stood out for me um, because I felt like I, I really needed to, I needed that extra um, kind of um, recollection um, at, at this particular point in my life. And so I started um, highlighting the quotes as I, as I normally do within books. But in addition to that, I, I for whatever reason, got the idea to make graphics and post them on an Instagram page just for, for myself. Just so I can kind of go through and say, oh, okay, cool, yeah. And have like a more visual reminder of these principles that I, that I felt were, were helpful for me at the time. Mm. I was really just doing it for myself to inspire me and keep me, keep my spirits up. Um, and my girlfriend actually showed me Instagram. She, I had no idea what it was. She was like, she was always on it. And she was like, you know, at the end of 2013, actually. And, and, uh, and uh, I was like, okay. And, uh, and that's what I went. That's where I went. And I was just posting things for myself, like I said, but it, it, it caught on. And um, the, the growth was slow at first, but, but fairly steady. And somewhere along the line, I just kind of knew that there was something there and started to take a little bit more, more seriously. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you started it, then it wasn't. So you really didn't have any motivation to make money with it then. You really just started it because it was uh, it was something that you f felt helped you um, and you were like in this process of kind of like reading and you wanted to remind yourself of these quotes. Was there any other accounts out there at the time? I'm curious to know if there was like yeah. other accounts that you were following that, you know, that you saw in that kind of realm of, you know, the motivational quotes or like the inspirational quotes um yeah yeah you, there were a couple the, the the biggest one by far which i don't even know if i found or at the time but the, the biggest one um at the time was like i think two or three million followers was the good quote um and um they're still they're still massive and that's a quote account but really a little bit different from what what i do um and at the time when i first like the first couple of weeks that I that I was playing around on Instagram, I did find a couple of accounts that were like, well, initially, my post, my content was all centered around the book Think and Grow Rich by Napoleon Hill. Right. And the account used to be named Think Grow Rich. Um, I, I changed it because I, I, I didn't want copyright issues and I also kind of want to take it in a different direction. So mm. so I tweaked the, the name a little bit, obviously. But um at the time, there was a couple of accounts that I found that were also based on Napoleon Hill's work. And Napoleon Hill, if you don't know, is just a classic self-help author. And um, this book was written a long time ago. And so uh, I reached out to those accounts. I started following those accounts. And I had no idea what the Instagram game was all about. I had no clue. I was just, I was just there not to impress anybody, not to do anything, but, but post stuff that I thought was, was interesting. And... And, and that's an important point because although there are many good reasons to, to start an endeavor or, or, or venture, um, one of the, my favorites is just because you want to and just because it feels good and because it excites you. And it's a really powerful um, energy because when you're doing something that you're actually interested in and you're actually excited about, like you can stick with it even if it doesn't – even if it doesn't make money, Think or Prosper didn't make a, a dime for the first year, mm. um, almost, that, that it was in existence. And I didn't care. I didn't even think about that because I was doing something that, that was, like, exciting for me and that I actually enjoyed doing. And so, um, you know, I don't want to give platitudes like follow your passion or, like, do what you love because those aren't always helpful. But it is helpful to know that um, in in kind of acting on the things that you're excited about and that kind of spark you, um, you create an energy um, in that work that really is very, very difficult to replicate and, you know, in, in any other way. So, yeah, that's kind of a cool um, kind of point of, of uh, discussion, I think. Yeah, actually, so I have a few questions about that because when you started, it you said it took you about a year to before you started making money with it. Um, 
what was the motivating factor that kept you motivated to even do this? I mean, was it the fact that you were starting to see a bunch of followers like, you know, getting added on? Like, what was the carrot at the end of the stick that was pushing you forward? Because, I mean, when I, when I just hear somebody start a quote account, you know, now, you know, knowing that there's already a bunch of quote accounts, it sounds like you were one of the, f like, early on first, um, but... Like, yeah, like, why did you, you know, keep doing it and stick with it? Um, was it some traction that you got initially or was it just, no, I just want to keep doing this and just, uh, you know, see where I can take it? Um, it was, so here's the answer to that. You know you have a viable business when um, you don't have to ask your customers to buy something and they come to you. Mm -hmm. And that's what was happening with Bingo Prosper. Um, I, I, like I said, I didn't have any intention of, um, of monetizing it. Or I, you know, I didn't think about it, let's just say that. Um, it didn't occur to me. But I had um, one individual in particular um, reach out to me. He didn't know me. He was a, he was a fairly um, uh, well-known motivational uh, speaker and coach and uh, he's like hey um, can I pay you to post um, some quotes of mine <laughs> and and I didn't like I was like okay and I had no idea why he was asking me to do that but I was like mm -hmm. sure and um, and then someone else asked me that a couple days later and then someone else and uh, to this day 98% of the revenue that that we um, that we make from sponsored content is is all incoming. It's not solicited at all, um, and that's. I mean, I, I think that that's because even though it may on the surface seem like there's a quote account, um, and of course now there are many just quote accounts, right? Mm -hmm. Like um, with no real um, competitive advantage or value proposition. I think where Prosper was different in the sense that I always put my original twist on things and I always put my little two cents in and my original way of doing things. And it was helpful that I didn't know any other core accounts or any other people in my niche really didn't associate with them too much at the beginning um, because I didn't have anybody to mess up my, my thinking about uh, what was true to me, you know, and I didn't copy anybody, right? So yeah. that's just a, I think, important principle that I revisit often. It's like, why are you doing this? Like, what's you, what makes you different? When, what's your competitive advantage? I'm a big believer, like, don't compete if you don't have a competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't make any sense. And I think that we had that small little uniqueness that, that made us stand out. And that's true of a lot of businesses, successful businesses that you see today. Yeah, yeah, and I definitely can tell like a post from your account rather than from another account. Like you do have a unique thing to you. So, all right, there's so much I want to ask, but since we're talking about this competitive advantage, that's a, an important point, and I want people who are listening now who are, you know, either they have an Instagram account or are thinking about doing an Instagram account um, to keep that in mind when they're creating because if you just do another Me Too thing like you just do something that somebody else has done like you can be another you know millionaire you know freaking uh, yeah. <laughs> uh like coach or you know whatever like um it will have i mean in business it's a hard it's hard to develop a uh to be to stand out above the rest and to develop a relationship with your audience when you're just you know you're not coming from the heart. You're just kind of like mechanically posting things that you think are supposed yeah. to be what they're supposed to be. So, you know, um, can you give us some advice, uh, some tips on how to find your competitive? Like what are some examples of like a competitive advantage? What do you mean by competitive advantage? And then how do you showcase that? That's, that's a great question. Well, I'll try to take those one by one. So I'm just throwing like five of them at a time. <laughs> <laughs> um, the first one, what, what, like, what, what, what do I mean by competitive advantage? Yeah, yeah, mean? let's start with that, yeah. Um, it's really just what, um, 
what you're good at naturally um, that other people are like, like that you may take for granted and other and to other people it's like wow I heard a quote one time uh, it's like um, some of your most admired superpowers are the very things that you take for granted so if you have people like uh, asking you or you know telling you that you're good at this or that you have a certain proclivity um, toward this and you don't really even notice it, but it's just something that, that uh, gets pointed out to you um, or is a recurring theme in your life um, or something that you keep revisiting. That's an indication. This is kind of leading into your next part of the question, how you find your competitive advantage, right? Mm-hmm. It's kind of an indication that that may be something worth exploring. I mean, in my case, I, I think my competitive advantage, geez, here, here, here's what mine was, I, I think, and, and still is. Um, I sometimes take um, a little bit longer to really grasp concepts than, than I, I compare myself to my fiance because I'm with her all the time. She's super like, quick-witted and very, very sharp. She'll hear something one time and boom, remember it forever. And <laughs> yes, Don't that you hate that sometimes? Like, <laughs> <laughs> uh, and, and not just with education stuff, but with, with um, the education. <laughs> yeah, it's, yeah. It's, it's incredible. And so... Sometimes I'll need to hear it from multiple angles, multiple different in different ways, right? Mm-hmm. And the way I really retain information is when I process it in a very simple way in my mind and write it down. Mm-hmm. And that's how I really like solidify concepts in my mind. And I'm and I'm I need to be alone when I do. I need to be really take my time when I do that. But I like I'll read something, then I'll okay. Well, that what I think what they're trying to say is this, and I'll just kind of run that through my processing system, and then write that down in a way that makes sense to me. And apparently that amplification, um, that explanation that I do resonates with people because that, that's been my competitive advantage. Um, as far as I can tell, it's been one of, one of my competitive, benefits, competitive advantages. Um, another one um, is uh, my ability to curate the right content and curate content that really resonates with my followers. And, that, that's something that everybody can develop um, in whatever your field is because um, it's about – it's very easy for me because it's things that I find interesting. A lot of people try to find things that that um, they think other people will find interesting or they think will resonate with other people. Mm. And so that's a kind of a weaker place to come from when you're curating content or recommending things. You really have to be true yourself and ask yourself, really, what do I like? Is this interesting to me? Because if it's interesting to you on a genuine level, even if it seems weird, you should share it because you're you're not you're not as unique as you think you are, and you're and other people probably think it's cool too. Mm-hmm. And so that's a way of honing your competitive advantage too. Just noticing those things and then being observant of what you gravitate toward and um, and. and and what you like and what other people say you're good at. Yeah. Okay. Those are great tips. And I think uh, it's super important to to understand that and not start something that you don't have any interest in or you think you might have interest in. You know, and sometimes it takes experimenting. You know, I'm all for spinning up an account, trying it out. And, you know, if you quit after a month, okay, that's an indicator that it wasn't really something that you're all that interested in. And it's okay, you know. Yeah. Um, but you have to be aware of that and don't force yourself to do something that you think you're supposed to do because other people are doing it. Um, that actually reminds me of, like, uh, you know, the, the importance of focusing. So when you started uh, Think, Grow, Prosper, you know, like – how often were you posting? Yeah, how often were you posting? Um, I was posting about once a day. Once um, a day. For, the first, for the first, like, maybe two months, um, month or two. Uh-huh. And I literally remember getting um, DMs asking me to post, if I could post more than once a day. Mm. Like, hey, I really like your content. Can you post more than once a day? And that was just another indicator on my path that said, okay, you're doing something right. So, um, yeah. Okay. 
I, I don't mean to deviate too much from your question, but I also want to bring that up because it's like I'm really into validating business ideas and validating ideas. And so if you're doing something that you like and enjoy, great. But also if you are um, entrepreneurial minded and you want to take that to a level that maybe can support you financially, um, you have to be on the lookout for validation um, indicators. And, um, you know, mm-hmm. one of those for me was obviously the attention I was getting to follow up any. Another thing was people asking me, well, people wanting to give me money um, for, for promotions and, and, and two, asking me to post more. So obviously my content was resonating. Um, validation factor. So, you know, you're doing something right. But anyway, I was posting once a day and, and shortly thereafter, I did start to post um, two to three times a day um, for the preceding seven months. Yeah. Okay. And um, so were you doing that by yourself? Was this all just you behind the scenes, just posting, making content and everything? Yeah. Um, yeah. It's, it's always been just me. Um, like actually posting and, and creating content. I mean, recently my, my fiance has been, well, she actually came home a year ago from Uncle Ben's job just to, just to help with, with this business. And she does it more like email things and more infrastructure on the website and, and behind a lot of behind the scenes stuff that's very important. But it's, in terms of like the actual Instagram content, that's, that's really all, all me and always, always has been. Hmm. So. That's something that I've just never been comfortable out for. Yeah. So it's all you, um, which is a good point for others out there. You know, you can't always just like hire it out right away. You got to hustle. You got to, you know, right? Yeah, I, I'm totally for like delegating the right things. And, 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 and I've definitely pulled with the idea of delegating um, and, and outsourcing like this. Um, certain aspects of things are prosper even for a minute about like outsourcing the content creation i just can't do it because that is my competitive advantage but if your competitive advantage is not necessarily your content if it's not necessarily your amplification of you know like um other people's ideas as it is in my case or in my own ideas in, 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 in my case then, then maybe you can. Maybe, maybe outsourcing is a cool thing for content. And I know, I know a lot of business owners and some of my contemporaries who outsource their content creation, and and, and they're doing fine. Um, mm-hmm. But they, their competitive advantage and value proposition is lies elsewhere in another facet of their business. Mm. Okay, that's that's a good, uh, good tip. Um, so the next and uh, the last probably thing that we can kind of talk about is just your journey from you know zero to five hundred thousand to then a million like this is the question that i get asked most often by the income tips followers um is like how do i grow my account it's either how do i make money on instagram or how do i grow my account um and i know for us uh we did a lot of paid shout outs like that was really how we did it initially the Instagram game has changed a little bit since advertising has come out now. So like the results of that, you know, might not be as effective as they once were, but for your account, think grow prosper. How did you grow it? How did you get to your first 500,000? Let's just start with that. Okay. Um, I was, I was pulling up before we started talking, I was pulling up my timeline of, of events on my phone. This is my timeline of, um, like my different follower milestones um and yeah i started the account in january of 2014 in april of 2014 i had 10,000 followers um in january of 2015 i hit 100,000 followers um and then in april of 2015 i had 500,000 followers and then in october of 2015 i had a million wow <laughs> um so yeah i guess it was about a year and uh well almost two years um, for for that million mark, right? A little under, a little under two years for the mark. Um, but to answer your question, my girl from zero to five hundred thousand, or zero to ten thousand for that matter, or zero to a million, my growth strategy has been the same, and it's very boring, and it's very um, straightforward. Honestly, um, I, I, I've I've never paid for promotions, and I I don't 
say that to discount that because obviously that's my that's a big part of my business is right is promoting people. Um, in, in fact, the Instagram game has changed. Like I was one of the first in in, in my niche. I was I was I was really one of the first people in my niche on Instagram. So that helped a lot. I'm not gonna lie. That it was mm -hmm. good time for sure. Mm -hmm. um, but. I also was very consistent, and after those first several months of posting, first once a day, and then several more months, two to three times a day, I was posting every single day, and still have posted every single day since then, not missing one day, at least three to five times on, on my page, and like good quality posts, right, good quality content, um, and so that's that's a lot of consistency. Right, like Super. if you really think about that, that's, that's 365 times times three, right? Whatever that is, and times that how by how many posts I do per day, like that's a lot of posts. And 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 if you're not enjoying something, it's going to be very difficult to do that every single day. And that that just can be overlooked, like the consistency factor. So I don't want to dance around that. Um, it's like, first of all, you have to be very consistent with it. Like you can't just post like. And post one day and then not post the next the next few days and then expect like you know results like mm -hmm. this has been uh, it's a compound effect right it's yeah. like little things done over a, a long period of time add up that's true with investing that's true with um, in business and that's true with your Instagram account mm -hmm. um, if you are currently running a page like you have to be very consistent and deliver with your content also um, here's a key what you post is important, but also what you don't post is just as important. Mm. Um, what you leave out. For instance, I like to use Costco as an example. Um, co I love Costco. Like it, It's, in my opinion, the best curator of goods ever. Uh -huh. They curate goods so well. I can buy anything from Costco. Whatever I'm looking for, if I go to Costco and buy it, I know I'm getting a good product because they've curated it out of the out of all the vast number of things that you know like products that are on the marketplace they've created the best in like a certain price range right in, in like a in like a particular range of price uh, that that I know it's going to be good and so it, it, as, a, as opposed to like a Walmart where they have like a more variety but it's all not good like you may get home and be like, oh, well, like, this is kind of a cheap thing and this wasn't the best uh, product that I could have bought. Um, you don't have the problem at Costco. Yeah. Uh, and that's because they are very intentional about what they, what they curate and what they, post, oh, sorry, what they um, offer in their store. But they're also very intentional about what they don't offer. And that's the way I am with Instagram. And that's what I recommend for people, too, is, like, be very intentional about what you don't put out there because... Um, that affects the quality of your feed and of your page. Um, so to sum up my strategy, it, it, it's really being tr like being true um, and genuine about the content you post, meaning posting things that you're actually excited about, interested in, knowledgeable about, and staying and sticking to that theme. Um, when you stick to a theme consistently and stick to a subject consistently, you start getting people who rally around that and who expect that. And when and and pile on the consistency factor, and, and you just get a very powerful growth engine. The way social media is set up now, if you are posting things that are valuable and that are that are um, that are uh, that, that add value to, to the internet and to your followers. I assure you that they will let other people know about it. That's just how humans are wired. They want to let right. other people know about it. If nobody's sharing your stuff, you're not posting the right stuff, and that, that's just that's just how it is. So that's really the essence of of what fuels my growth is sticking to a very narrow niche of per in, in in the subject of personal development, which is very mindset based. Um, and sticking with it for a long time until people, every single day for the past three years, until people rallied around it in a way that it just gained momentum.
Yeah, yeah, it's that whole compound effect. So you just kept kept at it, kept at it, and uh, just kept compounding on top. So that's that's really uh, surprising to hear. I thought you would have at least paid like somebody to like share, but no, it's just massive consistency. <laughs> full disclosure, full disclosure, and I often forget this actually because it's it's so funny. I was around ten thousand followers, I think, and. It, Still had no idea what I was doing in the Instagram world, right? I was just out there, like, just posting stuff, right? But I was, like, excited. I was getting followers. But I, I, I didn't know what shout-outs were. I had no idea. And then I saw this account that it was, a, it was like a, um, a page of models, like Instagram models, just curated models, like women models. And it said, um, uh, like, like $25 shout-outs, DM me for more info. And I was like, "All right, I'll, I'll see what this is about." So I so I paid like twenty five or fifty dollars for like a like a, a several hour post on that on that random page. Yeah. Um, that's the only paid uh, post I've ever done. I did not. I did. I obviously I didn't get the results, and that's another topic altogether. But the reason why is because I didn't choose the right niche. And for people who are trying to go through, to grow through sponsored posts. By the way, I, I recommend sponsored posts at this stage in the, in the Instagram game, paid promos, huh. not, not just because that, that's my business. You know, I, I, I'm not. I'm not. I recommend business. you pay me. <laughs> right, 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 right. <laughs> no. uh, but the, the point is that at this stage in the Instagram game, like it's not as easy to grow as when, like three years ago, when I started the court account, because there's a lot of noise. There's so much noise on Instagram mm. that it's not as easy, and I won't. I won't tell you that it is. But that's why. Strategic and 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 um, very cleverly um, uh, orchestrated sponsored campaigns can be of great benefit to at least get you started and get your your page in the slipstream of like content that's out there on Instagram. So, um, but key to that is choosing the right page. The people that I work with, the clients that I work with, that have the greatest results. Um, in terms of follow conversions and sale conversions and just exposure in general are the pages that align best with like my content, right? And so it's very important as a, as, as somebody who's seeking, um, promos, if you are that, if you are that, that somebody that you seek out pages that are very much in line with your page, not just because they have a lot of followers. I will tell you now that a, 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 a smaller account that's more in line with your with your page, with your theme, with your subject matter, will gain you more followers and get you more exposure than a larger account that has less to do with your page. So mm. there's, there's a there's an income tip for you. Yeah, yeah. Well, I appreciate that. And just one more question that I'd like to ask um, before we kind of wrap things up here is uh, um, the process that you have, like, because it is important whether you do paid shoutouts uh, or or not. To be consistent, uh, what are your tips or tools that you use to stay consistent? Like, how do you schedule your time so that you are making these posts and you know setting them out? So that's what I would love to hear. Um, I will be the first to say that um, I am not the best like at like sticking to my daily schedule. Just this just this year, I'm like, okay, I gotta buckle down and like stick to a more coherent schedule. Um, but generally what it has been is like, like the, the main, the main way that I stay consistent is because I actually enjoy what I'm doing. So that's kind of the fundamental reason why I'm consistent. Like, even if I didn't get paid for this, I would literally still do it. And the reason why is because it makes me feel good. Um, I feel a sense of, um, order in the world when I, um, when I create post and curate like thoughts insights that are that resonate with me i just i like it you know it's like why people make music it's because um like they like it and they resonate with them and it makes them feel good it's, it's why other people like build stuff build furniture because it just makes sense to them right it's why other people fix things so that's kind of why i stay consistent um and 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 once you start making um a business from what you're what you naturally gravitate toward um, if you're that kind of person, then it's easier to stay motivated when, when you got, when you have, when you work with clients, right? 
or when you're selling products, right? It's easy to stay motivated when you when you're when you're bringing in some when you're bringing in the bacon. Yeah. So, so that's, can you tell me though? Do you do one post? Like, are you making a post and then right away you're sending it out, or are you like batch processing where you're like making five posts and then you're like the next day you kind of like send it to your phone and then upload it? Like, how are you doing that? I make about in the morning time. I make about eighty percent of my content for the day. Uh, I, I, I create about eighty percent, eighty eighty to ninety percent of my content for the entire day. I'll make from the time I get up, which is about you know seven thirty, um, to like maybe like sometimes twelve one o'clock. If I'm if I'm being honest, yeah. I'll create content for that day, and um, that's all I'll do. Um, and then I'll load it up into Instagram. Instagram now has a drafts feature where you can like save your drafts there, which is really cool. Before I had to like just keep it in my photo albums, but I'll, I'll keep it there. And then, and then what I'll do is I'll set alarms in my phone, um, like actual just alarms, like you would set to wake up, uh -huh. um, reminding me when to post. I also have like legit a legit planner. Like an actual analog paper planner where I write down all of my posts that I have to do. Um, and I literally check off posts with my pencil as I go through the day. Wow. And people laugh at me, but it's like, that's it's so just not technical. Some, it's, <laughs> that's so yeah, just, cool. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean, <laughs> I know, right? The Instagram guy has yeah, a planner. What? <laughs> Satisfying for me, and it's just what's worked now. I, I'm actually transitioning to a Google Calendar now because some of my you know some what, of my though, but sometimes I feel like we think we're supposed to use all these online tools, but really just having like a piece of paper and a freaking pen is all you need, man. I mean, I I like <laughs> I really love following like successful people of the past and stuff, like uh, yeah. the comedian Jerry Seinfeld and like uh, yeah. all these artists who, you know, pen and paper is their thing, you know? Yeah. And, and uh, I, even me, you know, I try to do whole, like, daily journaling. Um, when I open up that laptop or when I open up my phone, like, my brain switches on to, like, this this other mode of just, like, getting distracted, you know? But totally. when I have a piece totally. of paper there, like, boom, it's just, that's the thing. So I totally, you know, recommend that, <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> I'm, like, easily distracted. I just... Oh God, Instagram has made it. They've done such a good job of making their explore page sticky. Like I go on there and I like get lost in a whirlwind of like a, like a vortex of random memes and posts that I'm like, how, where did the past 20 minutes go? Yeah. Or like if we're being honest, where the past hour ago sometimes. It's just like <laughs> yeah. shocking, but it's a good, it, they did a great job because that's what social media is about and that's what gets people to, to stay on the site. So. Yeah, yeah, but uh, no, we have to work hard at figuring out our own routine. I think that's kind of my takeaway of what you're doing is we just got to find what's right for us. Um, yeah. But definitely having a consistent schedule, I think it sounds to me like it's something that's necessary. So no matter what tool you use or, you know, how you want to overly simplify it, you know, we you, you have to do it. If you want to grow an Instagram account uh, to be massive, 2.6 million followers, um, you got to be consistent. You got to, you know, stop complaining. You got to, you got to work at it and, uh, take it seriously. So dude, I really appreciate you sharing all the information. Um, this has been really valuable for me too, because obviously, uh, you know, I'm trying to grow an account and, um, you know, I've taken a lot from you, so I really appreciate it. Um, for those out there who haven't yet followed, uh, uh, Ruben, be sure to follow him at Think Grow Prosper. Um, I know he's working on uh, some books and is going to have some uh, a lot more things coming out. So, um, so yeah, be sure to follow him. And uh, do you have anything else, Ruben, before we sign off? Um, that's it, man. Just kind of, I, I just want to leave people with the uh, the message: like, stop doing things you don't like to do, as Gary. Gary Vaynerchuk says, stop doing shit you hate. Uh, you don't need to, and you can be excited about things and make it work for your lifestyle This in this crazy digital world we live in today. It's totally possible. All right. On that note, we're signing off. We'll see you guys later. Peace out. Thanks.